Game Builder Studio. Now the last major piece of this is the scoring. So we need a score display. I'm going to use a custom bitmap font for this. I've imported one already. You notice that it defaults to black. If I put it to white, it'll show the show through the original color. It's more of a tint color that can be applied, and I'll set this to zero. Just put it in the corner here. Call it score label. And I'll also add a prop a data container and call it properties. and I'll put a score property. Now when this bird hits the goal, so we need to add a collision, uh, some rules here for, for collisions. I'm gonna call it logic collision. First off, I need to go to the spatial to make sure that it can collide. Because right now, when you set any filter here of what uh, an object can collide with, it will only collide with those objects. If you wanted to collide with anything, you can clear this list. But um, we're doing object uh, collision filtering here, so I'm going to also select the goal because we wanted to collide with the goal. So if I go to the rules component and I add a collision event rule. Right here in the list, you'll see the goal. So when the collision start is ended, so we want when when the collision stops with the goal. So when it ends, it comes out the other side of the goal. That's when we want to add the score. Because if at any moment in time it hits something, the game ends. So when the collision stops, then we want to increase the score value on the score layer label. So we're going to set this property to an expression that is just simply going to increment that value by one. And you can set this to do whatever kind of scoring you want. Now we could constrain the value of that property to this label, but that's more processor intensive. So we will actually just change the property or change the display here once the score has been incremented. We're going to change the text value on the on the text render to a reference of the actual score property. So as I make it through the pipe, you'll see the score increases. And not before I make it through. Now let's also add a label for the beginning of the game. Initially the game's kind of paused, so we will just add a text render here. And I'll name it game title Got a flappy bird and I'm going to use the font sheet set this guy to white and we'll just add a nice effect to this to to have it fade out when the game starts, so I'll add a rules component. And once again, I'll check the property on the bird. Now, we could have had a state machine in here to manage all this, but we're keeping this really simple here and just doing, you know, just keying off of a property. So when this is one, I want this guy to use an interpolate action to fade out the alpha value of the renderer. We're going to start 
game title render alpha value that's where we, well I can just hard code the values from 1 to 0 set the duration to maybe 2 seconds I want this to play once and when it's done I'm just going to destroy this object because I don't need the title once it's finished Now, once the game's, you know, when when the, when the player hits the pipe, it doesn't affect the the, the bird's position anymore because we turn the pipe into a sensor. So what we're gonna do is just reload the level as a quick way to end the game. And of course, you could pause the game, slide up the menu to show the score. I'm not gonna go through all that right now, but you you pretty much get the uh, the picture. So. on the bird I'll add a rules component and call it logic collision with pipe and you'll notice my naming conventions here to kinda of keep these in order when you get a collision event that started with the pipe we will just simply we could we'll just, we'll just stop the flying set we don't need to do this but I'm just gonna show you we can set flying to zero and then we just reload the level so you can just use the change level action level zero and that will effectively reload the level. Oh, and I'm not very good. So the last piece of this is pretty much just adding maybe some sound effects. I'll do that next. Okay, the final touch I'll add to this is the sound effects. And you'll notice that in motion picture films and in games and and um, animated films the sound effects really sell the action and sell what's going on so it's good to add sound sound effects to your game I'm going to import those three sounds and I'll go to the bird when I tap I want to play a sound so I'm going to use the play sound action jump swoosh save that when the bird collides with the with the goal. I'll change this to collision with goal. When that happens, we'll play we'll play the uh, or rather, this is when the the point is scored. So when the collision stops, we'll play that the goal point score uh, score sound. And then when it hits the pipe, we want to play that smack sound effect. So let's run that. And I don't want to use the quick launch because we're going to run into errors. Whenever you import something or add new new objects, you want to use the, the main build just so you don't run into any errors. Once again, that, that quick launch is it's mainly for when you're toggling properties and you want to get quick access to run the game. very good at that and because the level reloads the uh, the crash sound doesn't play but the other ones do so I'll just turn that off just for there's a feature request to to kind of disable different actions instead of having to remove them to test things so that is definitely in the works so I'll remove the reload level just so we can hear the sound. <laughs> I 
All right, that's pretty funny. All right, well, that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, you got some good tips and tricks out of this, and uh, go ahead and make some games. Thanks.